In early spring, usually three to four weeks after the ice cover has left the lakes of New England, the male smallmouth bass ventures into shallow, rocky coves and shorelines. Here, the shallow water has begun to warm under the bright spring sunshine. The water temperature at this time is usually in the low to mid 50 degree range. Male smallmouth bass seek an area on the bottom that has just the right mix of clean sand and cobblestones. Typically, this area will have a large rock, sunken tree, or ledge nearby. Waters where nest sites are selected are usually six feet or less in depth. The bass, satisfied with the area, will begin to sweep away coarse materials, silt, and debris with its caudal or tail fin. The end result will be a circular depression two or three feet in diameter and two to four inches deep. This process may be repeated several times in other locations before the male is satisfied with his handiwork. As the water continues to warm, between 55 and 58 degrees, female smallmouth bass approach spawning areas from deeper water. As the females approach this area, their coloration is transformed into a series of dark, vertical bars. When a male sees a female, he rushes toward her and attempts to drive her to the nest site. At first, the female swims rapidly away, only to return later. During his attempts to drive the female to the nest, the male employs several behavioral tactics. In response to the approaching male, the female will orient herself in a head-down position in the water column. Circling movements by the male around the female are accompanied by contact nips from the male directed to the body of the female. Near the nest site, the male and female circle the nest in the typical push-lead behavior. These processes are repeated several times before the female swims to the nest accompanied by the male. When the male and female finally descend to the nest substrate, the male is beneath the female and in close contact with the bottom of the nest. The posterior part of the female, especially the caudal or tail section, is crossed over the dorsal or top of the male. This stage of behavior is called crossover. While over the nest site, the following behaviors may occur. Pair formation happens when the male and female bass align themselves in parallel positions, head to head and tail to tail over the nest bottom. Circling in the nest is often accomplished with the male outside the female working their way around the nest. The body wave occurs as the female gently swings her head and tail section side to side. The female may rise from the nest several times, usually in the head down position. Finally, in pair formation, the female rolls laterally and appears to quiver. Typically, the first and last episodes of quivering do not accompany egg deposition. Her soft dorsal and anal fins rapidly shake as egg deposition or extrusion occurs. Presumably, sperm release by the male occurs at the same time, but is not visible to the human eye. Sequences of circling the nest rim with the male gliding over the female and contact nips to her body occur repeatedly as the pair settle to the nest bottom and the female signals egg release with her entire body quivering. As the female ceases pair formation with the male, she is chased away from the nest site. Now comes the time for the male to either attract more females to the nest for spawning or to begin his guard status over the newly fertilized eggs. These eggs are pale gray and yellow and are very sticky. They adhere to each other and any other debris such as stones in the bottom of the nest. Incubation takes about 10 days at 54 degrees Fahrenheit. The male is so protective of his brood, he will often attack onlookers who venture too close for comfort, regardless of their size. The male will not feed again until after the young bass leave the nest site several weeks later. He will strike at any object that enters the nest area, such as a lure, but only in defense of his young removing foreign matter quickly to areas beyond the nest site. 
Newly hatched fry are approximately one-fifth of an inch in length and are nearly transparent. They live in the nest bottom as they gradually absorb their yolk sac. As the yolk sac disappears, the young fry begin to feed and at this time turn jet black in color. From this stage, the term black bass was created. Black fry rise over the nest in a dense swarm and continue to feed under the watchful eyes of the guardian male. As the size of the fry increases, the black fry slowly transform into the green fry stage, the coloration of a typical smallmouth bass. At this point, the green fry disperse into shallow rocky areas that afford protection and food and continue in their development. The fry will continue to grow until the spawning age of approximately five years. The male bass will now leave the nest site and begin a period of recovery for he is not fed since spawning several weeks earlier. At this point, he will return to his home range area and feed on crayfish and minnows.